Hello everyone and welcome to our ultimate CYC talk show. I am your host Isha and just like always I have a couple of guests with us today who are going to be talking about a very spicy topic. So today at our talk show we're going to be talking about the communication theory and Afreen here is going to start us off by talking about what communication theory is. Hello everyone, my name is Afreen and I'm going to be discussing what the communication approach theory is. So first, when I think of a communication theory approach, the first thing that comes to my mind is the way we talk to somebody. It could be through a family member, a friend, a coworker, anybody you see on the street, even your cashier, somebody that you have a communication with. It's the way that you speak to them. So communication a theory, pro- communication approach theory is a situation that we come across, whether it be in our personal or in our professional life. Uh, the situation comes across to the tone that we use when we're speaking to somebody, whether it be uh, somebody that's talking to us in a rude manner, how we react to them. It could be in a calm tone or we could be reacting to them in the same way they talk to us. Um, developing and practicing and understanding the situation that we come across for communication approach can help us to better understand others and learn the three different type of approaches. So the three lenses of communication approach are communication as a one-way process from sender to receiver. So what I mean by this is expect what you will give out. What I mean by this is if you talk to somebody in a rude manner and expect them to have a calm reaction, that's not going to happen. You, What you give out will come back to you. So you're the receiver. What you send out to the sender will come back to you. So if you're in a calm tone, expect a calm reaction. The second one is communication as a two-way process. What this means is interpreting what another person says. Example, miscommunication. If somebody tells you something and you miscommunicate it in a different way, that can cause a misunderstanding between two people, which happens very often. And then the final one is communication as an omnidiacronic diachronic process. So what that is, is receiving the sender's information in, in signals. It could be, again, a miscommunication of signals. So this could happen a lot in the work field as well as in people's personal life. And this causes misunderstandings between one another. So each of these approaches is critical in our personal and professional lives and plays a key role, especially as a child and youth care, child and youth care practitioner, which I will be passing on to Janaya, who will be going more into depth with that. So I'll now pass it on to Janaya. Thank you, Afreen. Hello, everyone. My name is Janaya, and today I'm going to be talking about how child and youth practitioners use a communication theory approach in their field. So I believe everybody is slightly aware of how communication theory is used, but I'm just going to be talking about a little bit of the techniques and methods that is um, that we all see on a day-to-day basis in the field. So basically, communication theory involves nonverbal and verbal communication, and while adhering to their professional competencies, they use techniques such as adjusting to a certain age, background, and culture experiences of their clients. Now, they display these by using a wide spread of messages such as silence, appropriate nonverbal communication, paraphrasing, summarizing, reflective of feelings, use an open-ended question, anything to help the client interact and communicate with not only themselves, but the people they um, surround themselves with on a daily basis. They use certain skills such as recognizing when the ind- individual may be, you know, having problems talking to their parents, their loved ones, or anybody they, as I said before, see on a day-to-day basis. And the, the practitioners then use the skills that I mentioned before, but they use them in a way where it also um, corresponds with their cultural views and practices. So the clients and the practitioners are on the same page. They also help them understand the meaning of communication and how significant it is. Once again, while still um, while still respecting the client's age and you know just making sure they're going from a strength-based perspective because communication in the CY field, CYC field is very hard, especially when you work with non-verbal clients. I know at my placement currently, as I was saying before, in this field, using nonverbal techniques and having a good, um, good understanding of how to use these techniques is very significant because there are a lot, a lot of nonverbal youth and adults in this field who are in care, and using this communication theories approach and having a good perspective of it will really help practitioners 
uh, not only communicate with the clients but in their families and this communication theory approach also helps um, practitioners encourage children and their families to um, develop really good skills for the children who are in care who are in school that helps them correspond with who they are as an individual and who are they are going to be in the future. Thanks, Janiyah. My name is Natalie, and today myself and Erica will be introducing you to the four theorists who are pioneers in the communications approach. These theorists are Virginia Satir, John Banman, Jane Gerber, and Maria Gomori. So Virginia Satir was an American author and psychotherapist. Satir theorized that mental health issues were a result of f broken family systems, thus she placed much emphasis on treating the entire family rather than just the individual. Satir believed that communication was key to maintaining healthy family relationships, and from this idea, she developed Satir Transformational Systemic Therapy. This is a therapy that is used to treat families facing relational challenges. Satir's premise of STST is quite unique. She believed that we were all connected through a life energy which runs innately through each and every one of us and this life energy can be tapped into if we want to make positive change in our lives. Satir would have clients put aside their presenting issues and address their inner feelings and choices in order to facilitate change within the family system. Our next theorist, John Banman, is actually a colleague and friend of Satir's. Banman was very intrigued by Satir's approach. He liked that her ideas were less clinical and more spiritual. He co-authored the book, The Satir Model, along with Satir and other theorists, Jane Gerber and Maria Gomori. Banman is one of the most prominent teachers of the Satir model today and has dedicated much of his career to further developing and studying this model. Now I will hand it off to Erica to speak about the last two theorists. Thanks, Natalie. So my name is Erica, and I'm here to talk about the two other theorists involved around the communication approaches theory. So we have Jane Gerber and Maria Gomori. So first up, we have Jane Gerber. She started her psychotherapy practice in 1960 with an emphasis on personal growth and development, shifting away from diagnosing neurosis and toward assisting individuals in living their best lives. Gerber also taught and worked with individuals in healing professions throughout the United States, Canada, Latin America, England, France, Israel, and Hong Kong. Her subjects included the Gestalt therapy, family therapy, human sexuality, widow and single parent transitions, uh, experiences with disease, death and dying, and other life transformations. So next up, we have Maria Gomori. She has a master's in social welfare as well as a PhD, who was a worldwide workshop leader who has developed a distinct method of creatively blending her own life knowledge with that of Satir and other great instructors. Maria Gomori was a systems family therapy pioneer. So she comes from a lengthy and disciplined history and she has made important contributions to the fields of psychiatry and social work training, designing various effective training programs. She has taught, shown, and used her version of the Satir model in workshops across Canada, the United States, Europe, South America, and Asia. She was the world's leading proponent of the Satir method for family therapy. And in fact, um, the city of Winnipe Winnipeg recognized her for a woman of distinction in the subject of health and wellness back in 2004. So now that we've discussed the different theorists who developed communication approaches, Virginia Satir, John Bannum, Jane Gerber, and Maria Gomori, I am now passing it on to Kenneth, who will briefly cover the traditional techniques identified in the communication approach. Kenneth? Thanks, Erica. Now for question number three, we will talk about the traditional techniques surrounding the Satir method and how CYCs can advance these techniques. So for Satir method, this approach has four traditional techniques. These are experiential, systemic, positively directional, and congruence. So exper experiential technique allows an individual to undergo the past events in their life while at the same time experiencing their life energy. Meanwhile, systemic is about addressing the significance of both intrapsychic and interactive systems of the person while doing treatment in their therapy. 
So positively directional is a technique in which the therapist focuses more on the individual's health, growth, and hope. In addition, this also helps them connect in their lives for in their life force positively and come across their desired peace and happiness. And lastly, congruence technique refers to the therapist being viewed as actively engaged, genuine, and caring. Moreover, this technique also recognizes the importance of acknowledging one's inner self as the helper will have a better solution if they know themselves. Mm, so in my opinion, the best way to advance these techniques, these techniques further is by doing more research. We are taught in our counseling theories and practice course about the various counseling orientations that surround our field. So we could also ask assistance from CYCs that, that practice these techniques or watch videos from YouTube that tackles these traditional techniques. It is also worth mentioning that you must carefully think when, when to use the satiric method because not all clients are the same. So I am now passing this one to Amara as she will discuss how these traditional techniques connect with relational, relational practice. Here you go Amara! Thank you Kenneth, my name is Amara and I'm here to talk about how those traditional techniques that were previously mentioned connect with relational practice. So relational practice is basically building and sustaining a healthy relationship between clients, families, and others. And how do, does relational practice connect with the traditional techniques as it basically both of them focus on building good relationships uh, with the people who we work with and being able to effectively communicate with one another. So techniques such as positive directional, which is um, one of the techniques by a theorist called Satir. Um, she talks about how this technique is heavily focused on a client's growth, health, and how to create positive change in their lifestyle. So with this kind of technique, it requires trust. So the client is able to effectively communicate what their needs are. So this technique allows them to connect with their feelings and build a relationship with the counselor so they are able to communicate how they're feeling and what changes they need. Um, so Satya believed communication was key in building healthy relationships. And another way and another way she showcased that was through another technique. So for example, congruence technique is another way of establishing good relationships with the client. So this technique is used in such a way that the client is able to recognize that the counselor is present in their moment, they're paying attention, and they're engaged. And the counselor is successfully able to communicate those certain characteristics, such as they are genuinely interested in what the client is trying to say and they're present in that moment. So this ties into relational practice as it actively works on building healthy relationships between the client and the counselor. So I am now going to pass it over to Isha who is going to demonstrate an activity for us. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for our guest speakers for giving us so much insight on what communication theory is. And like always, before we end, we're going to demonstrate one experimental activity which highlights the uniqueness of a CYC approach working with families. So for that activity, I just want to give you a little bit of background information. So the experimental activity which I wanted to focus on for our communication theory is really understanding what a conversation means and what actions in that conversation mean. And something that comes up when we think about this is perception check. Perception is very important when communicating because you want to understand the right and the appropriate information which has been given to you. Today's activity also focuses on perception check as it highlights the uniqueness of a CYC approach working with families. When working with families, we can do a scenario role play where family members will role play a situation where they were given a scenario by the CYC. They will then use the scenario to break down what is really happening in the scenario and simplifying it by answering these three questions. What was said? Did the characters in the scenario mean what they said? And what was the situation and was it read correctly? Um, these three questions will really break down what the scenario was saying. So the example that I have, I'm going to put up here is, Sophia was hanging out with two friends. When a friend asked if she was enjoying herself, she said, <sighs> in a quiet tone, I'm having a great time. Her friend said, 
you don't sound like you are having fun. Let's do something different. So then you would go back and you would answer the three questions. What was said? What did Sophia say and what did the friends say? Did they mean what they said? Did Sophia mean that she was having fun or did she not mean that? And was the situation read correctly by each party? So did the friend read Sophia's nonverbal cues, yes or no? And what was the perception that Sophia had and what was the perception that that the friend had and when you start decoding situations like this um, working with families you're then going to start decoding situations in their homes and then the communication which um, is great or which can be improved based on this situ this scenario so this activity can be done at any home and really work towards perception check at our communication this activity is very unique to CYCs because we try to empathize and not sympathize when communicating or working with families. And that means that we're trying to understand what they're going through while working with them. Just like that, relating back to the communication theory, perception check while working with family is also very important. And please feel free to use this activity as your communication theory example.